Hi everyone. Welcome back to Swiss Home Garden. I'm Chitra. In this video, I will be taking you along our September garden. Let's begin. Let's start from the front yard. This here is the pow pow tree. They are actually growing very very slowly this year and we have had no fruits from them. Last year we could harvest a couple of fruits but this year there is none. These bushes are aronia berries. We planted a couple of them last autumn late in November and they are giving already some berries. These berries are sold as super food in many of the stores over here. They are quite astringent in taste. This bush will grow to about 2 to 3 meters in size. I used to add them to smoothies sometimes but I used to add the dried berries. And over here we have some horseradish. We didn't plant them, they just surfaced by itself. Last year we tasted some of this horseradish and they are actually very strong and very sharp in taste compared to the conventional ones. We didn't have much time to harvest so far but we will before it gets colder. This is our new robot which we got as a replacement to the old one. The features are more on this than the previous one and we are happy with it so far. We planted also this mirable plum tree last November and we did get a few plums. But there was a little problem with the plants and that is they had some bug infestation which is why these leaves are a little bit smaller and shrinkled. But we could rescue this plant by using our homemade fungicide for which I shared this recipe sometime back in how to make horsetail fungicide. These are the last of the summer roses. And this over here is our hazelnut trees. We had actually trimmed them quite a bit a couple of years back but they are slowly surfacing back to their height and they are starting to fruit again. Last couple of years we had no hazelnuts but this year we could collect at least about 20 hazelnuts from this bush. Beside the hazelnut bush is also our elderberry bush. We have harvested most of it so far but we have left a few for the birds and I also made two recipes. I will try to share them in the blog and also in this channel. We have the red variety and elderberries grow quite wild in northern Europe. And this colorful bush is our blueberry bush and they are already transforming to fall colors. We have just the last of the few berries. This is the wild part of our garden and we don't do much over here. I would love to make a little fairy garden below the small path under the elderberry bushes next year. Let's see how it works out. And our corn. Corns are ready for harvest when the hair completely dries out. We harvested quite a few of our own corn this year but they were not as fleshy or with a lot of seeds and that's the reason why we will be planting new ones next year. We will not be using these heirloom seeds. They are very sweet to taste. I steamed them and we also one day could grill them on the open fire. Mm-hmm. 
This is one of our zucchini plants and we could harvest quite a few of them. These were the round varieties. Almost reaching the end of the life cycle, you can see that the leaves are getting mouldy and so it will not be fruiting despite some flowers on it. And our last rhubarb for this season, all you have to do is just pull out the stalks from the rhizome and the leaves have to be removed because the leaves are very high in oxalates and it's poisonous for your body. You can get a stomach ache. This part of the garden is a little bit overgrown. There is more of the pumpkins underneath the foliage but we are unable to see them. But when the leaves are dried up, we can easily harvest. So we will let them till we can see them. The butternut squash actually lasts quite a bit longer. I could use the last of the butternut squash in March and that was the last one I had and they were still good enough to make soups. And over here we have the curry leaves. Curry leaves is a popular garnish for South Indian preps. We have in the meantime taken it inside our home because the temperature started to drop really rapidly in the last week. This year we planted quite a few varieties of pumpkins. Some of them were this gold nugget, black and silver and butternut. And this is one such. This variety I think is called gold and silver. I have dead cooked it although we harvested a couple so far. Here we planted some savoy cabbages in this patch. And these are great vegetables for fall garden planting. We planted them beginning of September. Savoy cabbages can be stored well into winter months and they are ideal for soups and you can also ferment them. You have to leave quite a bit of spacing in between each one because they grow quite big and then you can get the cabbages. And just beside the savoy cabbages are also some leeks and these can be harvested late into November and they are great for soups. Whatever we planted in the last three weeks are all winter vegetables which can be stored well into December. And this over here is the other zucchini plant. This is also slowly reaching the end of its life cycle. You can see by the leaves they start to get powdery on the top. Although there are some flowers these are not going to be fruiting anymore. The flowers, I heard, you can also cook them with a little bit of olive oil. This was where previously our potatoes were harvested and now it has grown a little bit wild. But somewhere amongst them is also some sugarloaf salads, which we will be harvesting. Sugarloafs are typical fall salads and they are quite bitter in taste. So what I usually do is I soak them for about 30 minutes before making the salad bowl. And some more pumpkin which has overgrown into the strawberry beds too. Some of these tomatoes are very close to the tomato greenhouse. And as you can see, they don't ripen as quickly as before. But we have been steadily harvesting a few tomatoes so far. I've tried to can these tomatoes and it took about two hours to get two jars. So I'm not going to be canning anymore because these are extremely watery. Would have preferred a very fleshy one. I just use them regularly into soups and for pasta sauces. And over here, we have some okras. And this is an okra flower. It's actually quite pretty. We had a very bad harvest of okras and we have left a couple of them to ripen and to dry in the plant itself to collect the seeds. And that is what he's showing you there. We're just letting them to collect the seeds for next year. I have also shared a video on how we are collecting and storing the seeds. I will leave the link in the description box. 
and this over here is scale. These sunflowers are coming every year on their own from the seeds that fall off. We never plant them. It gets a little bit difficult to actually keep them because they take away the light from the other plants. And the last of the cucumbers. We left a couple of them to collect the seeds. We are going to be ripening a couple. We are ripening them on the plant and then at one point we will take them before they fall off onto the ground and then we will ferment those seeds and then dry them and store them. For the squash type of vegetables what I usually do is I remove the pulp and then ferment the pulp for about few days before drying and then storing it appropriately. For the beans and the other vegetables we just leave them to dry completely on the plant before saving the seeds. That way the seeds get the maximum energy from the plant before the plant dies off. In between these big leaves are hidden some more of our pumpkin treasures. I guess we will know only at the end of the season how much is there. And just beside the compost pile is stinging nettle. Stinging nettle has a lot of health benefits. I usually dry the leaves and make tea out of them. In fact, you can even buy these stinging nettle tea leaves from pharmacies. And it's also very good for arthritis. You can just rub the leaf on your fingers and in your legs if you are suffering from arthritis. What we did was we used this also for fertilizing our soil. We soaked them in water for a few days and then used that water. Over here we planted kohlrabi. We could only plant the saplings because we were a little bit late to plant them from the seeds and moreover we had no seeds. Close to the greenhouse we have some eggplants but they are very late in fruiting. They are late in fruiting because they are outside the greenhouse and it was a relatively cold summer. But inside the greenhouse we will be seeing a few eggplants. This is the entrance to the greenhouse and these beautiful leaves are from the bitter gourd. Bitter gourd is very very popular in India and we got the seeds originally from India but since then we have been planting only our heirlooms and this creeper has also really a beautiful flower. Bitter melon is good for diabetes. Here you see some eggplants and some bell peppers. They are a little bit late in fruiting this year despite being inside the greenhouse. And then you get a glimpse of the bitter melon creeper twining around the physalis creeper. So they are all mixed up. The bigger leaves are from the physalis. And this over here is the fruit. A few are ripening, but I think the season is almost over. And over here we have a few varieties of chilies which we planted. In the pot we have a different variety of chili. These are the really small ones. We got this as a gift from a good friend of ours. They are right now flowering in this stage but in the meantime we have harvested quite a few. And this was the chilies which we harvested. I have shared a recipe of making fermented chili sauce. I will leave the link to the blog post below in the description box. This is our salad bed and the pumpkins seem to have grown also into the salad bed. And beside the pumpkin is also some carrots. And these are the salad flowers which will slowly turn into beans and then we can collect the seeds. Some of the carrots which have thrived and beside the carrots is also some eggplants. 
but they are really very late in flowering and it's too late now. You see a little bit of flowers but I don't think they will be giving any fruits. If we get it's just a one-off. And behind this salad bed we have the Sharon fruit tree. This year we are not very lucky in getting any fruits. They did flower in spring but then it suddenly turned very cold that the flowers fell off so we have no fruits. I guess next year will be much better. And behind the greenhouse is our banana tree. They really have grown double the size than previous years. Here my husband is harvesting some kale and other vegetables like tomatoes. I usually just cook the kale with a little bit of garlic and olive oil and at the end of it I add a little bit of salt. It's best not to take kale raw because many of these green leafy vegetables are high in oxalates. So cooking them reduces the oxalates and if you can drain out the water is also better. One of the pumpkin plants has creeped down towards the border into our neighbor's wall. This is the gold nugget variety of pumpkin. They are great for soups and pies. And it's also a little bit difficult to get to this part of the garden with your camera in hand. It's quite uneven and I don't want to be stepping on the plants. The second pumpkin which he is harvesting from behind the fence. This is very close to the stream. You can hardly get a glimpse of the stream because the plants have overgrown. We are harvesting some beans for lunch. These are the French beans. Only a couple of these plants survived. Last year we had a much better yield and a lot more plants to harvest from. The purple variety beans are actually quite big and fleshy and they are also having a very delicate taste. They don't remain purple when you cook them. They turn to a lightish greenish purple color. If they thrive, they give a lot of beans. Last year I could also flash freeze these beans and they lasted until spring this year. This patch close to the stream is our mint and over here is one sage. We lost our sage in the herb garden but fortunately we planted a couple of the twigs here and they have survived. We had about three or four planted and beside it that yellowish leaf is a jasmine creeper. Now this jasmine is winter hardy and I got just the twig from my friend and they seem to be thriving. We planted a couple of them and let me see if next year they start to flower. Planting sage and mint on the ground is actually not advisable because they are really invasive. They can take over the whole garden. Since we are not using this part so much and we cannot cultivate too many things, it doesn't really matter so much. And moving along across the stream, in this raised bed is some wild strawberries. They seem to be giving every now and then some fruits and they are constantly flowering since May and we are able to get few tiny strawberries every now and then. Above on this raised bed we have a small pot where we planted some chives and they are almost nearing the season but they will come again next year. And this here is rucula. 
we planted them a couple of years back but they seem to be giving every year flowers because some of the seeds do fall off into the pots they are also a little bit wild and invasive on the garden table i've laid out the harvest we have some apples from the common ground some beans then a couple of pumpkins and behind is the sugar loaf salad with this i end my video and garden tour thank you for watching if you are new to my channel kindly subscribe i post one new video every week on food from scratch swiss country living gardening and natural recipes join me also in the usual social media networks the links are given below i generally post a lot of garden updates on my instagram see you in my next video bye bye